Hey y'all, it's Lisa, your go-to gal for all things DIY and watercolor painting. And today I've got a super fun video. I enjoy doing collaborations with other creative folks because it just gives me a lot of inspiration. So today's video is part of the Hello Fall Open Playlist collaboration. It's hosted by myself and Ellie from DIY From House to Home. And our guest host this month is Tammy from Happiness Created. Y'all know I'm gonna link their channels in the description box below as well as the playlist because I told you I like doing these collaborations because of the inspiration and there's going to be a ton of inspiration in that playlist so I encourage you to check it out after you're done watching my video. Now let's stop talking about it and let's start being about it and let's get to creating. On this channel I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor and all things watercolor painting. Welcome to Our Gray House. We're going to start off today's video with a watercolor painting decor item <laughs> and I'm using this watercolor paper it's 117 pounds and I got it from Walmart and I'm taking these three is this a hexagon shape <laughs> I'm not even sure but I got these from Michaels and I'm just tracing the shape out onto the paper and then I cut out those shapes and I had sketched on some pumpkins like a pumpkin scene onto each one and I'm using my kneaded kneadable or kneaded eraser, kneadable eraser, the one that you can kind of like knead. <laughs> Anyways, I'm using that to kind of lighten up my sketches. And then I'm using my Artist Loft palette that I got from Michaels and I'm just using the orange color. And I don't, I don't know the names of the colors that I'm using. I, I don't have this palette memorized, but I'm doing a light um, wash first of the pumpkins. And the thing that you need to remember about watercolor painting is you start with your lightest value and then you can build it up, but you can't unbuild it really, at least not that easily. <laughs> so um, I'm going back after it dried and I'm darkening it up a bit. I did add some just like green blobbish kind of things. It wasn't like really leaf shapes. I was just kind of putting some greenery down because I knew that I was going to go back in with a pen, a pen later and kind of give it more detail. And I'm taking a brown color and I'm putting on the stem on the pumpkins. After that dried, I went back in with another layer to kind of darken it up and give it a little bit more definition. Again, you see me going back with the pumpkins and just adding a little bit more color there to just kind of further define it and help it to not look so flat. I do that with all of the pumpkins until I like how they look. And I also add a little bit more green and just till I like how it looks. And I added a little tendrils and some leaves to the top. And then I use that little saucer to kind of trace on a half circle. And here's me trying to figure out what I'm going to write, what I'm going to say, what's, what I'm going to put here. And I ended up just kind of penciling in the words, happy fall and then I took my micron pen and I'm going over it and oh I put happy fall y'all <laughs> so anyway I'm darkening darkening it up I'm, I'm not super happy with my lettering skills right now I, I need to kind of work on that be a little bit more patient with myself but you know overall it looks fine and so now I'm prepping the little hexagon is it a hexagon y'all correct me in the comments below if, it, if I'm wrong but I'm just taking the stickers off because I don't like that and I'm also taking the hangers off of two of them because um, I don't need them and I'm just saving the little pieces in case I need to use them later with another project and I'm just kind of um, uh, I was taking off the rest of that uh, jute one on the back of the other two that I don't need then I'm taking the color honey brown and I'm painting all of the thing. And I'm eventually I'm just going to paint the inside. I was trying to just do the frame and then I go back and I just do the whole thing. But I'm trying to be careful with it and not get all messy. So as you can see, it's all done now. And I'm kind of doing a dry fit and I'm having to, because they're not like perfectly shaped, you kind of got to, adjust and make some cuts to help them to fit better and I, I feel like they fit fine but you know it's not perfect and that's okay it doesn't have to be perfect but you can kind of see how I have and I'll give you a closer look at the final reveal but um, 
I went in with that pen and outlined some leaves and stuff like that. So I used wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree to glue those together. And then I'm just using a little bit of, I think it's Aileen's Tacky Glue to glue those inside. I should have used a glue stick, to be honest, or found it just a different way because it kind of warped the paper just a little bit on one of them. But you can't really tell. And this is how it turned out. And you can use this. It doesn't really fit on a tear tray, but you could use it like in a little vignette on a shelf somewhere. And it would be a really cute fall piece to add to your decor. And you made it. And it's easy to do. Super easy. I'm really loving watercolor painting. Y'all know I, I can't do a video without doing a book stack. And today's no exception. So I had... Um, this piece of wood, it's like a scrap piece of wood, and I'm actually putting Mod Podge on it because I have found that this wood soaks up paint a lot, and it tends to be rough, and so I thought maybe adding Mod Podge will help. You know, I really can't tell if it did or not, but then I took a the burlap color, um, <laughs> the color name is burlap, and I'm painting all around on all three books. And well, I'm not painting. There's, there's part that I'm not painting. You'll see it in a second because I'm going to glue them together, but let me work on the top first. <laughs> so I'm taking honey brown and then a darker brown color for the middle. And then I'm using that burlap color on the ends. And what I'm trying to do is kind of mimic a fawn's coat, you know, a baby deer. <laughs> and so I'm just blending, blending, blending. I want the darker to be a darker part in the middle and then it get lighter on the ends. And I'm going to link the girl that I saw do this. Um, I think her name's Mandy. Anyway, she makes super cute signs and I thought that just would be so fun. And I was going to do a sign on the outside porch, but it rained and it got, the sign got wet. So I have to wait for it to dry. Anyway, here I am gluing all those pieces together. And as you can see, oh, I'm trying to figure out which side I want to face the front. But I'm just using the wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree to glue them together. And then I got this stencil. And I think this is the same stencil that, stencil that she used. And I'm using a linen color, or maybe that's off-white. And I'm dabbing it on. The thing I don't like about this stencil is I couldn't get it to stick down like... Um, very well so it kind of kept lifting but in the end it really didn't matter because you know spots on a deer are not perfect and neither were the spots on my book stack. <laughs> I used my Cricut to cut out the words home sweet home and I'm just attaching them to the front of these little book stacks. Now the thing that I did not do with this one is add a ribbon which I usually add a ribbon or a piece of jute twine. I don't know what to add to the end of it. And maybe I don't need to add anything because this is how it turned out. I just feel it looks too plain. So give me, please leave me a comment and tell me what you think I should add to this because I kept, I, I tried to jute twine. I didn't like how it looked. I tried a little ribbon, didn't like how it looked. So anyway, I just feel it looks too plain and I need, I need to zhuzh it up a little bit. So let me know in the comments below what I should do to kind of, you know, jazz it up a little bit. If you like sharing about the projects and DIYs that you're working on and the creative things that you're doing, you might want to join my group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I run it with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY and um, you know, you might make some new friends in there. So I encourage you to join. The link will be in the description box below. But now let's get back to the video. All right, y'all, I'm just going to forewarn you. This turns out super cute. <laughs> so I had these little terracotta pots that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm painting the part that you see me painting there. I was going to use it for another project a long time ago. I'm just reusing this because I'm trying to use items in my stash without buying things. So I'm painting it. I think it's either the linen color or the burlap color and um, I'm giving it a really good coat there. And these saucers that I got that go with the terracotta pots, I actually had to buy this from Hobby Lobby because I couldn't really find it anywhere else. And I think they were $4 for four or five of them. I can't remember. Anyway, I'm using a really dark brown color and I don't remember the name of it, but I'm using that and I'm painting all around top and bottom and on the sides. And then I'm t painting the 
right there. <laughs> what do you call that part of the t of the terracotta pot? The the not the lip, but anyway, I'm painting that part brown as well to match the saucer. Now I am using some paint pens to add a face and I'm using a black paint pen for the eyes and then I'm doing kind of a squiggly mouth and then I go back in and put like stitch marks. This is going to be a scarecrow and I use an orange paint pen to make the nose and then here I'm drying it because I'm an impatient crafter <laughs> and then I'm taking my white paint pen and trying to add the eyes on. It is a little harder. The, the paint pens that I have don't work as well but you know, we make it do. Then I had this hula skirt from Dollar Tree and I had this ages ago and it's lasted me forever. So I pulled off some of the strands and I'm going to use that for the scarecrow's hair. And I'm just using some hot glue to attach it and be careful because hot glue is hot and you can burn yourself. And, <laughs> um, um, I'm just like making sure it's all attached down. And then I'm like, no, I need more hair. So I cut off that end there and I just add some more hair and I just use hot glue again to attach that all. Once I have enough hair, I just put a bunch of hot glue and I put the saucer on top, kind of like a little hat type thing. And then I flip it over and I, I bought, I got this potpourri stuff. It's not really potpourri stuff. It's like little pine cones and like little mini pumpkins, but I got it from Dollar Tree, but I got it several years ago and I haven't seen it since. It smells great. And anyway, I'm just using that as kind of a filler and that little tea light that's in there. It is an LED tea light or not. It's not a real candle or anything. And I didn't hot glue that down, but I'm gluing all the other parts down. And the reason I didn't hot glue the tea light thing down is because in case I need to replace it or, you know, something like that. I wanted to be able to easily take it out if I needed to, but I'm just adding some little pine cones and the pumpkins. This is how it turned out. Super cute. And the little light, you know, the candle lights up. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I just think it turned out really, really cute. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have just a bunch of different sizes? And I, oh, full disclosure, I got this idea from Southern, a Southern girl can Southern girl can. Oh my gosh. Am I messing up her name? I am so sorry. I'm going to have a link to that video in the description box below as well, because, um, hers turned out super cute. She made a really big one anyways. Okay. Let's get on to the next DIY. This is actually our final DIY. I got this wood round from Dollar Tree and I'm just taking off that jute twine cause I don't need it right now. And I sectioned it off, not directly in the middle, but kind of off center from the middle. And I'm using Waverly chalk, we really wax in the color antique and I'm painting it on and then I use a little damp scrap piece of cloth to wipe it off. So once that's dry, I am um, kind of taping off because I'm going to be doing the same fawn kind of pattern, painting pattern um, on that other side. And again, I'm using the burlap, honey brown, and then a darker brown. I don't know what the name of the darker brown is, but I just kind of mixed the honey brown and the darker brown, and I put that in the center, and I put a little bit of the honey brown on each side, and then I'm going to put the burlap on the very outside. And I just blend it until your heart is happy. That's, that's my method. <laughs> that's my ideology about painting this. Um, because it's really kind of hard to explain. You just got to kind of keep messing with it and you'll see me adding more color and blending, 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 adding a little more color, blending, and just till I like how it looks. So then I reveal the tape. I love a good tape pull and I put the tape back on, on the edge of where the Waverly Wax was and you see me doing it there and I'm going to take some black paint and I'm just going to make like a thin line because I kind of wanted something to differentiate the two sides. I didn't want them just like going together. So now that that's dry, I'm going to take the painter's tape and I am going to lay down that stencil that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to lay the tape over the line. Okay. And then I'm taking the color, it's burlap and linen, I think I, no, I used antique white or off-white and the linen color. And I'm using that to make the stencils. Now, you know, I'm not really 
into like hunting or anything. So I really don't know the fawn pattern other than what I Googled. <laughs> so I'm just stenciling on a whole bunch of these spots and hoping that it looks somewhat like a fawn's coat. The thing I don't like about the stencil is, I think I mentioned this before, it's not staying down. It keeps lifting and it, it's not like sticky. That That's my only complaint. And because of that, the stencil is not near as crisp as maybe it could be. But on the other hand, it looks more natural to me. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. I have to touch up the black because, again, the stencil <laughs> lifted a little bit and it got on part of that black line. And then I used my Cricut to cut out the stencil that says, Hello Fall. And I'm attaching it to the plain side, the, the side that I have that antique wax on. And I had forgotten, I didn't remember, that vinyl doesn't really stick to the... Um, antique wax very well. So what I should have done is put a coat of Mod Podge down first, but I didn't, and I didn't want to relay stuff down, so I didn't want to mess with that. So what I'm doing is just taking some Mod Podge, and I'm putting a hopefully light enough coat that it'll help it stick, but it won't like look weird or anything like that. And this is how it turned out. I love it. Now, the only thing that I'm kind of wondering is like, should I put a bow on it? Should I, it's going to go on my front, well, actually on a wreath in my house and it'll go in the center and I'll have like colored, um, floral around it. But should I, should I put a bow on it? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below and let me know in the comments below, which one was your favorite. I would love to know. Thank y'all so much for joining me today while I paint, craft, and create. I hope you enjoyed the DIYs that I shared today. And don't forget, I've got tons of information in the description box below, so check it out. And um, let me know which one was your favorite. Uh, let me know what's going on with you today. What are you working on? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's it. And so I'm just going to wrap it up. Um, and thank you. I appreciate you watching my video. I really do. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or something like that, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!